Carlos Palestico Garcia, commonly known as Carlos P. Garcia, November 4, 1896 to June 14, 1971, was a Filipino teacher, poet, orator, lawyer, public official, political economist, organized guerrilla and Commonwealth military leader, who was the eighth president of the Philippines. Early life Garcia was born in Taliban, Bohol on November 4, 1896, to Policranio Garcia and Ambrosia Palestico, who were both natives of Bangud, Abra. Garcia grew up with politics, with his father serving as a municipal mayor for four terms. He acquired his primary education in his native town Taliban, then took his secondary education in Cebu Provincial High School, now Avalana National School, both on top of his class. Initially, he pursued his college education at Silliman University in Dumaguete City, Negros Oriental, and later studied at the Philippine Law School, the College of Law of National University, where he earned his law degree in 1923 and later, he received his honorary degree, Doctor of Humanities, Honoris Causa from National University in 1961. He was among the top ten in the bar examination, rather than practice law right away, he worked as a teacher for two years at Bohol Provincial High School. He became famous for his poetry in Bohol, where he earned the nickname, Prince of Visayan Poets, and the Bard from Bohol. Family On May 24, 1933, he married Leonila Dimadiga, and they had a daughter, Linda Garcia Campos. Political career Garcia entered politics in 1925, scoring an impressive victory to become representative of the 3rd District of Bohol. He was elected for another term in 1928 and served until 1931. He was elected governor of Bohol in 1933, but served only until 1941 when he successfully ran for Senate, but he was unable to serve due to the Japanese occupation of the Philippines during the World War II. He assumed the office when Congress reconvened in 1945 after Allied liberation and the end of the war. When he resumed duties as senator after the war, he was chosen Senate Majority Floor Leader. The press consistently voted him as one of the most outstanding senators. Simultaneously, he occupied a position in the Nationalista Party. World War II Garcia refused to cooperate with the Japanese during the war. He did not surrender when he was placed on the wanted list with a price on his head. He instead and took part in the guerrilla activities and served as advisor in the free government organized in Bohol. Vice Presidency Garcia was the running mate of Ramon Magsaysay in the 1953 presidential election in which both men won. He was appointed Secretary of Foreign Affairs by President Magsaysay, and for four years served concurrently as Vice President. As Secretary of Foreign Affairs, he opened formal reparation negotiations in an effort to end the nine-year technical state of war between Japan and the Philippines, leading to an agreement on April 1954. During the Geneva Conference of 1954 on Korean Unification and Other Asian Problems, Garcia, as chairman of the Philippine delegation, attacked communist promises in Asia and defended the U.S. policy in the Far East. In a speech on May 7, 1954 the day that the Viet Minh defeated French forces at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu in Vietnam Garcia repeated the Philippine stand for nationalism and opposition to communism. Garcia acted as chairman of the eight-nation Southeast Asian Security Conference held in Manila in September 1954, which led to the development of the Southeast Asia Treaty Organization, CETO. Presidency Accession At the time of President Magsaysay's sudden death on March 17, 1957, Garcia was heading the Philippine delegation to the CETO conference then being held at Canberra, Australia. Having been immediately notified of the tragedy, Vice President Garcia inplaned back for Manila. Upon his arrival he directly repaired to Malacañang Palace to assume the duties of President. Chief Justice Ricardo Paris, of the Supreme Court, was at hand to administer the oath of office. President Garcia 
S. First actions dealt with the declaration of a period of mourning for the whole nation and the burial ceremonies for the late Chief Executive Magsaysay. Anti-Communism After much discussion, both official and public, the Congress of the Philippines, finally, approved a bill outlawing the Communist Party of the Philippines. Despite the pressure exerted against the congressional measure, President Carlos P. Garcia signed the said bill into law as Republic Act No. 1700 on June 19, 1957. Republic Act 1700 was superseded by Presidential Decree 885, entitled Outlawing Subversive Organization, Penalizing Membership Therein and for Other Purposes. This was amended by Presidential Decree 1736, and later superseded by Presidential Decree 1835, entitled, Codifying the Various Laws on Anti-Subversion and Increasing the Penalties for Membership in Subversive Organization. This, in turn, was amended by Presidential Decree 1975. On May 5, 1987, Executive Order 167 repealed Presidential Decrees 1835 and 1975 as being unduly restrictive of the constitutional right to form associations. On September 22, 1992, Republic Act 1700, as amended, was repealed by Republic Act 7636. Filipino First Policy President Garcia exercised the Filipino First Policy, for which he was known. This policy heavily favored Filipino businessmen over foreign investor. He was also responsible for changes in retail trade which greatly affected the Chinese businessmen in the country. In a speech during a joint session of Congress on September 18, 1946, President Garcia said the following. Austerity Program in the face of the trying conditions of the country, President Garcia initiated what has been called the Austerity Program. His administration was characterized by its austerity program and its insistence on a comprehensive nationalist policy. On March 3, 1960, he affirmed the need for complete economic freedom and added that the government no longer would tolerate the dominance of foreign interests, especially American, in the national economy. He promised to shake off the yoke of alien domination in business, trade, commerce and industry." Garcia was also credited with his role in reviving Filipino cultural arts. The main points of the austerity program were The government would tighten up its controls to prevent abuses in the overshipment of exports under license and in underpricing as well. There would be a more rigid enforcement of the existing regulations on barter shipments. Government imports themselves were to be restricted to essential items. The government also would reduce rice imports to a minimum. An overhauling of the local transportation system would be attempted so as to reduce the importation of gasoline and spare parts. The tax system would be revised so as to attain more equitable distribution of the payment burden and achieve more effective collection from those with ability to pay. There would be an intensification of food production, the program was hailed by the people at large and confidence was expressed that the measures proposed would help solve the standing problems of the republic. Bolan serrano Agreement During his administration, he acted on the bolan serrano Agreement, which shortened the lease of the American bases from 99 years to 25 years and made it renewable after every five years. Republic Cultural Award In addition to his laws and programs, the Garcia administration also put emphasis on reviving the Filipino culture. In doing so, the Republic Cultural Award was created. To this day, the award is being given to Filipino artists, scientists, historians, and writers. 1961 Presidential Election at the end of his second term, he ran for re-election in the presidential elections in November 1961, but was defeated by his vice president Diosdado Macapagal, who belonged to the opposing Liberal Party. The president and the vice president are elected separately in the country. Cabinet Post-presidency and death 
After his failed re-election bid, Garcia retired to Tagbalaran to resume as a private citizen. On June 1, 1971, Garcia was elected delegate of the 1971 Constitutional Convention. The convention delegates elected him as the president of the convention. However, just days after his election, on June 14, 1971, Garcia died from a fatal heart attack on 5.57 p.m. at his residence in Bohol Avenue, now SGT. Isguera Avenue, Quezon City. He was succeeded as president of the convention by his former vice president, Diosdado Macapagal. Garcia became the first layman to lie in state in Manila Cathedral, a privilege until then limited to a deceased Archbishop of Manila, and the first president to be buried at the Livingan ng Mga Bayani. Honors Foreign Honors Malaya, Order of the Crown of the Realm, Honorary Recipient, DMN, K, 1959 Spain, Order of Civil Merit, Collar, October 1, 1957 South Vietnam, Order of Kim Khan, March 19, 1956 References Zaid, Gregorio F., 1984 Philippine History and Government. National Bookstore Printing Press. External links Works written by or about Carlos P. Garcia at Wikisource Media related to Carlos P. Garcia at Wikimedia Commons Carlos P. Garcia on the Presidential Museum and Library